。哦，好的。欢迎大家光临财信辩论。同，呃、uh, ，Welcome to the 呃、uh, 财信 session rebooting Chinese finance. We have a wonderful panelist here. They are、uh, Mr. Liu Mingkang, the former 呃、uh, CBRC director. And Mr. Lo Turner, 呃、uh, FB. R. And Mr. Nicholas Anguzin, Chairman and CEO, Asia Pacific, J.P. Morgan Chase. And Mr. Zhang Yichen, Chairman and CEO, City Capital. And Mr. Zhu Ning from Shanghai Advanced Institute of Finance. Uh, these are all the experts from academic and uh, management and uh, regulators of Chinese finance. I want to brief the audience. You can raise your questions uh, online through Sina.com, or you can raise questions on site. And there are two marks. Our topics: one is Davos, one is a uh, uh, Chinese finance prospect. Please use hash, hash key um, on your topic, and uh, I will help you to raise the question through my iPad. Uh, why do we say rebooting China's finance? On the one hand, China's financial system is already very big, uh, over 9 billion RMB. And uh, uh, we need to change. We cannot rely on uh, the traditional financial system, and uh, we are seriously challenged. Maybe the barbarians uh, think the key lies in cross-border banks, but actually, uh, internet uh, finance is the key. So my first question to the panelists, uh, to release the burden, to open up, to innovate. And how can the Chinese finance re, uh, re react to this? Mr. Liu, please. Over the ten, uh, past 10 years, Chinese financial pro, um, system has made wonderful progress because the Chinese government attached great importance to the financial system. And uh, we have uh, come a long way. For example, uh, we ended um, the monopoly of the state-owned commercial banks. Uh, we will not uh, turn to the mayors or the uh, um, financial governors. And uh, we're allowed to uh, issue the uh, subprime mortgage on the market to uh, make up for the tier one and tier two capital. These are the measures to um, help the market. And also, uh, we strengthen our efforts to fend off the risks. The capital adequacy ratio um, reached above the basal uh, requirement. And uh, also, the total amount of uh, uh, capital reached almost uh, uh, 10 trillion RMB, and uh, provision um, is over 3 trillion RMB. So we have uh, um, abandoned provision to guard against risks. And uh, we also have over 10 trillion US dollars of uh, foreign exchange reserve. And uh, people are very sensitive to war risks. Uh, for example, banking 
associations, the state council and the Ministry of Finance, uh, people pay a lot of attention to shadow banking and the internet finance. We are very sensitive. And uh, people conduct early discussions and early moves. Another progress is uh, we're in the best stage for international cooperation. For example, we joined FSB and uh, we uh, have um, activities in these uh, frameworks and we also have cooperation with IMF and World Bank. So these are the programs, uh, progress, but for the challenges, I think there are the following aspects which we are considering. Uh, one is to separate, uh, before we emphasize that the um, government should be separate from business, and now the fiscal uh, system should be uh, separated from the banking system. And the local government and the local banks should be in charge of their own profit and loss. And uh, they should consider their own capital flow and uh, issue uh, debt to the market. If the local government financing vehicles continue to uh, strengthen, uh, it will add to the debt of the banks and it will cause risk. So uh, our budget law, new budget law, uh, is under drafting and uh, we will have a more, um, we have a better or brighter um, policy toward local finance and will continue to regulate the capital market. Without a strong capital market, especially equity market, debt market, we cannot help or boost the economy in a new time. We know some VC and PE. Uh, these two things are very similar. But uh, uh, for bio fund, uh, we need to find something uh, to uh, conduct MA and to digest the overcapacity of the SOEs. However, we fall short of our expectations in this regard. And also the regulations toward uh, getting listed or IPO is uh, changing. I think uh, uh, Hong Kong Shanghai Exchange uh, uh, has been making progress. Also, the banks need to focus and uh, they need to conduct in depth uh, business. It has to do with their strategic transformation. They should focus on SMBs. Uh, these are the source of uh, innovation and also source of producting, uh, of uh, improving productivity. However, uh, taxations and employment, these are fundamentals. Also, uh, China's trade import is about two a trillion U.S. dollars and another two trillion U.S. dollars of export, accounting for almost one third of the world's total. So behind China is still China. No, uh, no other country in the world can substitute China uh, in international trade. So uh, trade finance also need to reform, and uh, intro Asia trade finance and trade settlement has great potential. Thirdly, the fixed asset investment is very large in China. However, project financing um, numbered less. So how can we connect banks and project sponsors and project entities and to have a clear job assignment or uh, division between them uh, is something we have to consider. And also, finance need to serve the world. We need to uh, 
we need to have some taxation and fiscal support uh, to help digest the overcapacity so that MA can become easier. Uh, be it international or domestic companies, uh, we can allow some loss for these companies. We need to uh, allow some MPLs for uh, these uh, companies for transformation. If we can have a better grasp of the above mentioned four aspects, Chinese banking system has great hope. But of course, we still need to uh, try to build the corporate governance and the cultural and the uh, co enterprise culture development. We have a lot of talents. If we have better institutions, we will have uh, better uh, vitality and retain these talents. We will uh, not serve our own interests. We can also serve our customers' interest. And also for regulation, uh, we need to reform the regulation system. Uh, before we have uh, separate um, regulation, but now there are a lot of things mixed up. So the consistency in interpretation of uh, the regulation and also the predictability, uh, the predictability of uh, the outcome of uh, irregularities uh, should be paid attention to. Otherwise, uh, we cannot create an enabling environment for the business community. It's not so difficult to reboot Chinese finance. And China's, for example, the insurance industry is faced with greater opportunities because of the aging population and the fewer uh, young children. And to caring for the uh, young and the old um, has already created a sunrise industry. And we need to transform the mechanisms and institutions. And uh, every festival, um, a lot of people swarm to Hong Kong to buy insurance. So if our domestic market can do a better job, then uh, China's finance will enjoy a brighter future. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Uh, you have given a very insightful view. I will give floor to Lot Turner now. Well, thank you very much. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be talking here this afternoon. Actually, a very particular pleasure to be on the same uh, platform as uh, Liu Ming Kang. Uh, uh, MK uh, and I uh, worked very closely together on the FSB, uh, which you mentioned, uh, in the issues to do with the redesign of the global financial system after the financial crisis. And from that, I was very aware, uh, from talking to uh, MK and others about the Chairman Liu and others, the very, very uh, significant progress that has been made, uh, which Chairman Liu uh, just uh, uh, talked about. But I, uh, like him, would like to focus on the challenges. And I want to suggest three challenges for the financial system, which relate to what needs to happen in the Chinese real economy. And then a word on how difficult those are. And a final word about how not to be diverted uh, by uh, unimportant objectives. The three challenges are first, the supply of credit to SMEs. If you look at what the typical uh, SME uh, in China is paying uh, to the formal banking system uh, for credit, it would appear to be on average something like 20% versus major corporates or um, uh, SOEs uh, able to borrow at 6 or 7%. This difference of 13%, we always see this difference uh, across the world, uh, but this is a higher difference uh, than in most other uh, countries. And there are also many SMEs, I think, we, we well know, which find it difficult to find credit in pure quantity terms and are relying on either intercompany credit or high-priced informal networks of credit. And that reflects some well-known skews within biases, skews within the uh, banking system of the state-owned banks having a natural tendency to lend money to the state-owned enterprises. They're familiar with them. They uh, feel close to them. 
And the key point is that if China is really going to move to a decisive role for the market and the development of a service sector and the development of more of a private sector, a better supply of credit, which is less skewed towards the largest companies and the SOEs, I think is important. The second challenge, which again starts from a real economy challenge, is the rebalancing of the economy away from a very high investment focus, current investment pace 50% of GDP, which is you know, outside all the historic models of other development processes, towards more consumption. And that, within that, the liberalization of deposit interest rates uh, could play a useful role. There are a number of reasons why liberalizing uh, deposit interest, removing the cap on deposit interest, may be relevant both to rebalancing and to financial stability. Uh, lower deposit rates uh, represent essentially a subsidy flow from households to business. Uh, essentially, it means that some categories of business are getting underpriced credit, which is likely to result in a misallocation of capital uh, to capital investment projects, which are at the margin are wasted. And I think we all know that alongside the much important and very good capital investment in China, there is also a proportion, and probably now a significant proportion, uh, which is uh, somewhat wasted. So underpricing of credit is a problem, but it is also true that that subsidy essentially takes income away from consumers and gives it to business, and that gets in the way of the expansion of consumption, uh, which is an important development uh, within uh, the Chinese economy. It also has, I think, a worry worrisome uh, financial stability uh, development because it means that if you don't totally control the system, you get things which look like deposits and sound like deposits, but they manage to be not called deposits. They manage to get called wealth management products or they manage to get called money balances at Alipay. Uh, both of which are different mechanisms of uh, sending uh, money through the system, uh, either direct uh, to lending or uh, in the form of a, uh, a wholesale finance to the banking industry. Banks no longer uh, having their own deposits, but getting the money off Alipay, which effectively has deposits. And we know from the experience of the US that you have to watch that very carefully. That if you get the development of money market funds, which again actually their origins in the states, in the US, is precisely the same origins as some of these things uh, in China. It is the fact that up until the early 80s, uh, America had uh, a regulation Q, as it was called, a deposit interest cap, which generated the development of the money market funds, which we thought were fine until 2008, when we realized that wholesale money into the banking system can be very flighty money. It can be subject to runs. So having a deposit interest cap, which encourages a set of regulatory arbitrages, uh, can itself be a form of risk. The final third thing I would mention as a challenge for the whole Chinese economy, but also for the financial system, is the creation of real hard budget disciplines in both the real economy and the financial system. You really can't have a system which has a decisive role for the market unless there is a possibility of default a possibility of bankruptcy, a possibility of a failure. That needs rules to make sure that happens in a non-disruptive fashion, but a market system has to be uh, disciplined by the possibility of failure. And I think what's happened in the eight months of this year uh, for us looking uh, outside at the Chinese financial system is a, an interesting backwards and forwards as to whether the authorities really are willing to go towards that. There was a lot of excitement back in January about a wealth management product, which I think I remember was to a coal company in Shaanxi, um, which uh, looked as if it would be a major default. And then at the end of the day, it was a tiny default, a relatively small haircut, a, a process of looking after the problems. And I think throughout the year, there's been discussion as to whether loans are being moved to the asset management companies, but still funded by the banks in a way that avoid the problem uh, of default. But at some level time, the Chinese authorities, both in the financial system and the real economy, will have to allow there to be loans that go bad, because without that, again, one is potentially driving a, a misallocation of capital. And the longer that one doesn't you know, seize that problem, the longer the danger that more and more credit is simply rolled over, and the credit to GDP just gets to a higher and higher level, 
up already over the last five years from 130% of GDP to 250%. So those are three major challenges. But I think we also need to recognize that they're very difficult challenges, and you can't solve these challenges by simply saying, I'll just have a free market and everything will be fine. Because we know from our economies that a completely free market in credit also has biases within it. You leave the allocation of credit just entirely to the free market without macro prudential tools, without a worry about it, and they will go off, the banks will go off, and they'll lend lots of money against real estate and not enough money to SMEs. I mean, in the EU and the UK, we are now worried about whether our financial systems lend enough money to SMEs. And both the Bank of England and the ECB actually have in place special lending facilities deliberately designed to try and get through funding to SMEs and not to mortgage markets. So we have not found that completely free markets you know, magically uh, solve uh, all these problems. And there are certainly huge difficulties of transition because once you've already got a very large stock of debt uh, in the economy, 250% uh, of GDP, Imposing hard budget disciplines, you have to get the pace of that right, because if you simply chuck them in immediately and suddenly say we're going to have a whole load of defaults, and if you don't have resolution systems for banks and you don't get the pace right, you can shock the economy uh, in a way uh, which depresses it significantly. So these are very difficult uh, challenges. And I think uh, the crucial thing is to recognize how both very important and difficult they are. And that is my final thought I would make, that in attacking those, I would be careful of one of the things in the subtitle of our, uh, our session today. We have the phrase rebooting uh, Chinese finance. I'm perfectly happy with that. But we have a subtitle which says what models and reforms will boost China's financial sector. I would be careful of the idea of boost because it implies that you want a bigger financial sector as an aim in itself. The crucial thing is to have a financial sector which is helping you set, solve uh, real economy problems. So I would prefer the title to say will help reform China's financial sector rather than simply boost it. Thank you, Not Turner. A suggestion noted. We will do better next time. Thank you. So our, our two uh, senior regulators in our, in our panel have already made, uh, made their points. Now it's a it's term for our practitioners. Nick, first. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I'm going to build up on what was mentioned by Lord Turner and also by Chairman Liu. And I read that you were at Chase at some point. I was at Chase. Okay, so another bank. Right. Good, great. Yeah. When I was 22, I was at Chase. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'd like to build on the phrase of the markets playing a decisive role on the allocation of resources. And Obviously, it's very important in an economy, as Lord Turner said, that is investing around 50% of GDP, which is you know, uh, just a gigantic number. And part of it is, is, is a cultural um, result of savings also being pretty high. So clearly, this is particularly important, and, and a lot of attention around this has been uh, paid lately. And when we discuss the, the issue, what does it mean? It means that we need to be able to have the right risk and return framework. So Lord Turner said that he was quite encouraged at the beginning of the year when he saw that there's possibly some change around some defaults and, and while some people around the world looked at that as a negative thing, many other uh, players, especially in, in the financial industry, we saw it as something actually quite, quite positive in the sense that, okay, this means that the market will actually be in a position to price risk. Today, pricing risk in China is fairly difficult. So pricing risk will certainly play a significant role in allocating resources in the most efficient ways. And it, it's becoming more and more important as we go to a service and consumption-driven economy. So there are, in my view, three things that are important to be able to have a functioning market where risk is priced appropriately. First of all, 
we need competition. To have competition, we need, we need a level playing field. We need to make sure that we have um, new players that are able to participate in the market. And part of the topic is also all the topic around internet and the, the role that they could play. And there are things in favor, things against. How do we regulate them that are quite important? There's also certain restrictions on foreign players in terms of having a, particip a significant participation in local financial institutions or securities companies that also plays a, a very important role. In, I'll just give the example of JP Morgan. We, we have five joint ventures, and while we, we feel pretty comfortable with the partners that we have in our joint ventures, if we were to choose a way of investing and operating in any country around the world, we, we, we wouldn't choose to have five different partners depending on where you go and, and to build our presence and to have our best people and our best resources dedicated in that manner. So trying to really allow for greater participation and flexibility by you know, foreign investors participating in the local financial sector, we think could be constructive in terms of building that competition and uh, improved environment. The second thing that we need is transparency. And when we, need, when we talk about transparency, I'm not talking about the shadow part of shadow banking, but, but, but it does touch into certain aspects of that. Because when you look at um, the discussions around trust companies, it is not clear exactly where the risk lies. Who is absorbing the risk? And while it may be clear from reading resolutions, bylaws, who is on paper assuming the risk, it's not clear if it's the trust companies, the financial institutions, or the investors in the end that will uh, bear, bear the cost of price uh, or risk being uh, allocated and, 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 and distributed in, in the right way. So we need very clear rules of the game to be able to have uh, uh, an, an evolving and, and fruitful financial system. And the third one is effective regulation and supervision. And I think there are you know, great components and great progress that has been done in, in this area. The, for the most part, the uh, Chinese financial system is a very solid system, well-regulated system, well-supervised system. And um, this will ensure that the first two points that are mentioned are sustainable in the long term, transparency and competitiveness. It will also protect against systemic risks, which is something very important. And we have seen the effects of um, other markets where when certain players, and, and it, it doesn't need to be financial institutions. It could come from other sectors. It could come from insurance sectors. It could come from other uh, uh, players, financial players, internet compas, companies, etc. So it's important to have a holistic view of the financial system and what the potential impact is in, in terms of the overall performance of, um, of a country. So those are some of the areas that I think are important in terms of like um, creating a very solid and sustainable financial sector. Some other areas where I think uh, there could be um, important improvements and, and developments are creating a safety net for the system. And that could vary. Some you know, short-term uh, initiatives is the creation of deposit insurance. Others that are more important for the, um, for the long term are, for example, developments around encouragement of insurance companies, as Chairman Liu mentioned, pension system. Um, those could potentially fix some of the issues al around availability of long-term capital. Because insurance companies and pension funds, they would like to have long-term investments. So that may help also in the development of project financing and other areas that are very necessary for the development of infrastructure. The other one, development of the capital markets. And this one is also important in terms of developing long-term financing alternative, sustainable access to companies that are you know, investing in, in China. So that is one that I think there's quite a bit of progress. The Shanghai 
Hong Kong Stock Connect. I think it's a, it's a great initiative that will have significant impact and it's in, in the right direction. And, and the last one is we need to continue fostering innovation. And as I said before, the additional competition in the market, whether it's by foreign investors, by newcomers, as long as, if it's, as long as it's a level playing field, is definitely going to play a substantial role in that. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, 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 just now, the previous speaker have uh, covered a lot of aspects from the macro levels. I totally agree. I want to be more specific relating to my daily work. First, in the financial system, the business I'm in, uh, VC and PE, uh, what role should they play? Yesterday, Premier Li Keqiang, in his keynote speech at the opening plenary, he said that we should uh, encourage uh, startups. I think uh, this is a very good call. Chinese people are very innovative. In this way, we can display our innovative capability. And that's the fundamental to boost the national economy. But uh, to start a business, where does the money come from? We still need a very developed VCMP sector to support. The capital uh, managed by this business, for example, in the United States, it's almost 5% of its GDP. But in China, it's almost 1% of the GDP. So this sector in China still has great potential to grow. Also, in VC and PE sector, we provide uh, funds in terms of uh, equity. The previous speakers mentioned that from a leverage point of view, uh, the leverage ratio of uh, Chinese economy is very high. Lord Turner mentioned that it's almost 250% of its GDP. So actually, what we need is to deleverage for startups. Uh, what they need is equity investment. You cannot expect uh, banks to give direct uh, credit to the startups. So that's my first point. Second, uh, has something to do with the shadow banking system. Uh, if you want to track the money flow of a shadow banking system, it's usually to the local government and also property uh, companies. For real estate companies, a lot of uh, money still goes to the local government. To address this issue, uh, we see a lot of uh, debt of uh, the local government. If we combine uh, the guarantee part it's almost uh, 18 trillion RMB. It sounds a large number. But uh, when I joined uh, the Winter Davos, I break it down. It's usually two year term for the uh, 18 trillion. If we can refinance every two years, it will have great pressure on the uh, banking system. But for the same amount of debt, if you build a full-fledged, highly efficient debt market, especially municipal bound market, every year the part of a refinance will go down 
uh, substantially and it will ease pressure for the banking system. So that's what I uh, want to uh, add to Mr. Liu's point. We have worked for many years to build uh, diversified layers of a uh, uh, capital market, but the debt market so far um, hasn't been developed very well. And also for internet companies. Mr. Liu said the regulators uh, has very high tolerance toward internet companies. The same thing that has been done by Ali, by Tencent, by Baidu. The U.S. regulators won't be so tolerant as the Chinese regulators. So I think the Chinese government has uh, made great efforts here. They want to encourage Chinese financial innovation. They want it to go one step further. Because of the legacy problem uh, the Chinese financial system lagged behind. So internet sector is our um, opportunity. Maybe we can go even beyond the United States. It's like the same issue on e-commerce. Since uh, the modern commerce in the uh, United States is already very developed, so e-commerce uh, can only be a dessert. It cannot be a main course. However, in China, maybe e-commerce uh, players can be the main dish. And then come back to PEVC sector. It's also an important part of the uh, comprehensive and full-fledged multi-layer financial system. Uh, the banks holds the majority of the assets. It accounts for 70 or 80 percent of the total financial system assets. Before we build a full-fledged uh, and uh, uh, multi-layer financial system, what we lack is a long-term fund. For example, how do we really establish the enterprise annuity system so that this part of fund can enter the investment sector? Uh, PVC sector in the United States at the beginning, uh, was only the tool for some rich families. It's not a real sector or a real industry. But after the 1970s, because the uh, ERISA law was uh, passed by the United States, the uh, pension fund uh, can uh, be allowed to invest in PE and VC. So PE and VC sector really developed. And uh, it also helped the uh, stock market and helped the financial management business as well as, as the insurance. It can provide stable funding to these uh, industries. Maybe with uh, the uh, long-term funding stability, our Chinese stock market won't be so short-sighted. That's my point. Uh, Mr. Zhu, I think uh, uh, the previous speakers are, uh, have shared wonderful ideas. So to reboot Chinese finance after the 20 or 30 years of development, uh, Chinese financial system are faced with four turning points. First is from quantitative to qualitative transformation. We mentioned our banking system, the uh, uh, capitalization of the stock market, and the scale of the uh, trust product. Uh, they all uh, ranked on top of the world. And with the scale expansion, uh, we uh, pay more attention to, for example, with the uh, uh, economic restructuring and its economic slowdown, uh, we pay more attention to risks. So before, uh, we want a, a fast and good sound development of financial system, but now we focus more on risk. And thirdly, 
uh, financial service as a high-end se service sector. It should be part of uh, the real economy. However, after uh, 2007 and 2008, after the financial crisis, uh, the real economy and the financial sector uh, is put on uh, the, the confronting side instead of uh, uh, helping each other. So uh, it's not only in China, but the whole world. For the financial system, for the banking system, people are not very friendly. Uh, we can sense that it's a change in China. And finally, the leverage and risk of the financial system are transferring from private sector to the public sector. Why do we say that? Because the SOE's leverage ratio and the uh, local uh, government financing vehicles uh, ratio, uh, leveraging ratio are within control, uh, but they are increasing. It shows that the whole financial system uh, need to rebalance and reform. But how to reform? I have uh, three main uh, points to pay attention. First is the uh, interest rate marketization. I think in this uh, process, uh, the uh, small amount deposit interest rate hasn't been deregulated yet. That's the most important part. In the US, it also uh, took 10 years for it to be deregulated. And also, in the past two years, we see a lot of internet product and the, uh, the uh, wealth management product and trust product. And uh, these are all tools to push forward the marketization of the interest rate market. If we can use such uh, uh, tools, and there will be a lot of uh, um, asymmetry product, I think we might as well just uh, be direct to establish the uh, deposit assurance system and uh, accelerate the marketization of the small amount deposit because the interest rate is an important factor. It reflects the whole economy um, and its allocation of time and risk. Uh, in uh, past 20 years, we even need a coupon to buy, a, uh, buy, buy some pork or some other machines. So for different borrowers, for different people with different credit abilities, it has a different attitude. So when can we let market uh, play uh, the full role so that we can have a, a fair and transparent mar pricing of the um, interest rate? I think this will help a lot for China's financial reform. The State Council has issued a lot of policies. Uh, how can the um, finance better serve the economy? But uh, under the current interest rate uh, system, maybe the uh, uh, private capital won't uh, uh, want to uh, set up banks. And also, second, you have uh, mentioned the multi-layer capital market. I agree with Mr. Zhang and Mr. Liu. I think the core from uh, uh, business uh, point of view, the development of that market is the most important. It's one stone to kill many birds, be it uh, enterprise or uh, local uh, financing vehicles. They should disclose their uh, financial information more. And uh, it can also help the uh, corporate governance in China. Uh, also, that market development can help the government through municipal bond market and through direct financing to meet the uh, direct investors and give a uh, proper rate of uh, the risks. And also, with the debt market development, uh, we can help uh, with the exit um, system of the stock market. One number five. Of course, uh, we can consider the possibility of a good debt market, and then the investors uh, will not have to waste their money in the uh, low yielding stock market and also the uh, high, uh, risky uh, real estate. 
industry and also can help uh, dilute the bubble in the property markets and also can uh, help with uh, the orderly development of the capital markets overall. So I think that debt market is really a key to the development of uh, capital markets. Now, the Hong Kong and Shanghai exchange link is really a good innovation. Now, the uh, Hong Kong is still a preferred choice for IPOs of the Chinese companies. However, uh, the uh, in terms of diversity of the currency and the listing places is still lacking for China. Um, multi-currency and multi-geographical uh, uh, locations are not there yet. Well, we still have to leave some time. Well, sorry about that. Just last point. Uh, the third point I wanted to make is uh, the implicit guarantee for the exit uh, market, uh, exit strategy, be it the stock market or the uh, uh, banking uh, sector and wealth uh, management uh, products. There's a lot of uh, uh, protection from the government. So how can we... Uh, encourage the government to uh, exit the so-called implicit guarantee. That's very important. Thank you so much. Now, we all talked about the internet-based finance, and we also received a question from uh, the out, uh, outside of this venue. Now, uh, Mr. Zhang uh, Yichen talked about the policy uh, being so tolerant of the internet-based finance in terms of the, uh, its current development. And uh, in terms of identification of risk before they want to uh, institute a proper policy. Now, because of the uh, impact uh, from the internet-based finance, uh, we think this is a very important issue. Now, um, and Chairman Liu Ming Khan also made a speech recently about uh, the development of the internet-based finance uh, and the development of the consumer uh, finance. Now, about internet-based finance, I think it's uh, really it, uh, it really has a great potential uh, to toward robust development, but it has to have a good uh, strategy and a vision and a value system. Well, uh, internet uh, is well equipped with the data and interfaced based on internet and uh, maybe cl uh, uh, cloud computing if necessary. Now, three uh, advantages that it has. It's a zero distance uh, with the uh, customers and also low cost. So everybody can be the provider and the uh, uh, con uh, uh, consumer of the credit. And also the democratic way of uh, uh, participation, that can really encourage innovation. Now, these three points are uh, the natural strength or the advantages of the internet-based finance. Now, we need to keep those uh, advantages, but they need to uh, respect some pattern uh, or discipline. It needs to be uh, small. and needs to be uh, uh, widespread in, t in terms of uh, a risk distribution. Uh, distribution. And uh, thirdly, it needs to be simple. So these three points are very important for its uh, uh, viable development and to keep the uh, cost low and risk low. And also proper regulation is needed. It needs to be uh, in a differentiated way in terms of regulation. Otherwise, it can be problematic. Now, uh, internet-based finance is still young, but is uh, rapidly developing. Over 1,000 such companies, uh, 200, over 200 crowdfunding and uh, cash pool, and also uh, the uh, underground uh, refinancing. Uh, for example, uh, it's actually a fraud. Uh, they would get the money. Uh, in the morning, and uh, they take the money away and uh, uh, disappear in the afternoon. Well, I think this is only natural in the starting stage of any industry. Um, well, this is sort of like a warm-up period in front of the official competition. 
uh, in uh, games. But after the warm up, you need the rules before the game starts. You cannot make rules as the game、uh, is going on, or you only、uh, get the rules or set the rules after the games. That will be chaotic. So it's time now to、uh, encourage、uh, the industry's development with differentiated rules for regulation. Now, Yi Chen, Mr. Zhang, if China's、uh, financial、uh, system Uh, to become as efficient as the U.S. or the European ones, the impact from internet-based finance would not be th that、uh, disruptive. Now, because of that,、uh, the lack of sophistication in the financial system,、uh, these uh, the uh, internet-based finance actually can play a bigger role、uh, than it should be. So,、uh, what are your thinking in your investment strategy? Well, honestly,、uh, we are actually not making an investment. Uh, Uh, investment strategies towards the internet-based finance sector, because just like、uh, Chairman Liu said,、uh, the rules are not there yet.、Uh, we are a big conglomerate, you know, under the name Citic. So if、uh, we make an investment, but somebody is a、uh, fraudulent case, and that would be risky for us. Be it Alibaba or Tencent, we actually have been in. We were in talks in terms of possible cooperation, but no tangible project really pans out. Well, probably because、uh, you're aiming too high. Your、uh, your capital investment is always、uh, aiming the、uh, bigger amount. Well, we actually.、Uh, We were looking at、uh, different companies, but there were no good ones. Well, Professor Zhu,、uh, both these two speakers talked more about risks.、Uh, what about you? I think,、uh, in addition to、uh, regulation, there's also、uh, risks with、uh, corporate governance. Well, behind risks. Uh, this sector is actually promoting the further development of the financial system. And also, it does really bring、uh, 15 to 30 percent of yield to the investors, where there are no other good options for investment. So we need to also look at、uh, the benefits that it has brought, but also we need to balance、uh, between the risks and returns. Now we open the floor for questions. Who has a question? Please raise your hand and also identify yourself. And also、uh, state which、uh, speaker you direct your question to. Now, in the corner there, please stand up. From、uh, D. Yu Shaw, a quick question for、uh, Chairman Liu.、Uh, you mentioned a lot about the reforms、uh, in your、uh, in your remarks.、Um, I'm kind of curious.、Uh, you know, reforms take time, right? So, in the interim period, while reforms are being enacted, when there is deleveraging. Uh, when when there is a、uh, you know, change happening, what happens to、uh, growth? What happens to the economy? And how do you mitigate these these impacts? Thank you.、Uh, could, could you could you? I, I, sorry, I didn't catch the、uh, last part of your question.、Uh, Say, what is the impact on growth in the economy, and、uh, how do you mitigate or prevent some of these impacts? Right. Thank right. you. This, uh, well. In terms of the current、uh, growth of the economy, it has、uh, moderated a little bit. It's really only natural because a China's、uh, economic growth, well, it's actually different. Well, right now the period is different from the 1997 crisis. We are actually、uh, more open.、Uh, the external demand. Is weak has weakened, and internally we has de demand to restructure the economies, and also to absorb the excess、uh, capacity because there are a lot of industries that have excess、uh, production capacity. So that's why the leadership is very decisive about reducing the excess production, and also there's the uh, uh, the appeal for re、uh, reduction of、uh, environmental pollution. Uh, and also, there is uh, the further、uh, reform of the SOEs. I think that's a good in the long term. It's good for the 
uh, financial system, but in the short term, in the minute term, there will be some rise in terms of the bad debts. Uh, some people have asked me, we see the increase in the uh, MPL. Well, I said well, it's only natural. Uh, relatively speaking, it was uh, pretty low. And it was uh, in 2010, it was a double digit growth in terms of the economy. And now 7.5% uh, and uh, reduced by 30%. So it will have some impact on the banking system. But like I said, uh, we have enough reserves for bad debt, uh, three uh, trillion. We have good uh, the CAR, uh, the adequate uh, the capital adequacy ratio, and also the uh, permission to issue preferred uh, uh, stock uh, and sub debt. So this is enough to absorb the adjustments of the real estate uh, bubble and also the financing for the energy efficiency and the environmental pollution uh, reduction. But we should not be complacent. Two biggest e e uh, in, uh, enemy uh, complacency is one of them, one of the two. That's definitely a big no-no. So if we uh, look at the long term, we need to accelerate the reform. So deepen the uh, deepening of the reform and acceleration of the reform are uh, crit critical. So I do agree with the leadership in terms of uh, the direction of the reform before we can embrace a bright uh, future. And the second economy, uh, the second enemy would be panic. Uh, 200 percent, over 200 percent of a debt ratio, and also the doubling of the MPL uh, from a 0.8 uh, percent to over 1 percent. Well, there's no need for panic here. Chinese have a habit of uh, a good habit of uh, a good sense of direction, and also we want to take our uh, time. We want to take our steps gradually. So these are two kind of uh, uh, tendencies of the Chinese people. Uh, we should not just uh, panic. I think we still have time because we have uh, the uh, scale of the market. To answer your question, definitely there will be some impact, negative impact on the economy and hence the stress and pressure, and that we actually can generate innovation and motivation for further reform. We ha can take a final question in the middle, uh, in the suit, please. Uh, a uh, question for Gucho, knowing that you are uh, originally from Argentina, and given what's happening with the sovereign debt situation in Argentina, is there any lesson that China can draw from, from your country originally? <laughs> well, it's very different. Um, the one thing that, that I would say, and, and um, I did work for 20 years covering Latin America, so I've been for the last two years in, in Asia, and um, China and Asia in general have um, a unique opportunity to actually determine its own future. The amount of savings and investment is something that differentiates China from Latin America. Both regions have tremendous potential, are emerging economies, relatively low debt to GDP, high um, level of reserves, not so much Argentina, but Brazil, which is probably your country or your bank's country, I mean, is in that situation. But they have this reliance on external investment that um, in the case of, of China is not there. China can determine its own future. So when I see China taking steps slowly but surely, I am very encouraged, I'm very optimistic. And if we really allow the market to have a decisive role on determining the allocation of resources, this will be a great story in not so long. Thank you, Nick. Uh, now, for the interest of time, uh, we'll wrap up our discussions and let's uh, give a, a round of warm applause to our panelists here. Thank you. Uh, now, I'll see you next year. <laughs>